A Maven multi-module project is a way to split a large project into multiple smaller reusable and manageable modules. These modules are logically grouped under a parent project, also known as root project, which manages the build and dependencies for all the child modules. And each module is treated as an individual Maven project, which means they're going to have their own pom.xml file, but are still part of the larger project. For example, here we have the e-commerce app project, whose modules are commons, service, web, and data. Commons module might have all the shared utilities like DTO, constants, etc. The service module might have the business logic and services. The web module might have the REST API or web application related code. And then the data module would have the code pertaining to data access or repository related code. With this approach, we can separate the concerns. Each module handles a specific functionality to make the project more organized and each module can be built and tested independently. This will all make sense once we take a look at an example. Okay, let us see how we can create Maven multi-module project. For that, I'm going to go to the file menu, click on new Maven project. Let's skip the archetype selection, hit next. I'm going to give group ID as com.company an artifact ID as my ecom app. For packaging though, we're going to choose POM. This is what is going to make this project a parent project. And then hit finish. Once I do that, I'm going to right click on the project, new, and this time I'm going to choose Maven module. We're going to give our module a name, something like comments. Make sure that your parent project is selected here. Let's also skip the archetype selection here too. And this is going to be a standard Maven project. Hit next. Once you're okay with what's in here, hit finish. Do make sure that you would either choose jar or war and not pom here because this is going to be a standard Maven project. Once you do that, hit finish. Similarly, I'm going to create one more module. Let's call it as service, skip the Maven archetype selection, hit next and finish. Now let's take a look at what's inside the pom.xml file. In the parent pom.xml, we have this new tag added called modules, which has listed the modules that we have just created. These are the artifact IDs of those modules. And if I go inside the pom.xml of a particular module, you see the tag called parent, which is having the coordinates of the parent project. So this indicates that these two are the modules of the parent project called my ecom app. Let me now pause the video, introduce some code inside the parent pom, and that way I'll be able to explain how dependencies and configurations can be managed in multi-module Maven project. So this is inside the parent pom that I've added the dependencies and plugins. Let me walk you through exactly how this actually works. Whatever the dependencies that you add inside the dependencies tag, all child modules will inherit and include these dependencies automatically without the child modules needing to declare them. So even though in the child modules pom.xml, you don't see these dependencies, those would be inherited automatically. And here you would typically include the dependencies that are going to remain common across all the modules. For example, logging frameworks or Apache commons or testing libraries like JUnit can be included as part of dependencies tag. If you don't want the child projects to not automatically inherit a dependency, you would want that dependency to be part of dependency management. If a child module wants to use any of these dependencies, they would have to explicitly declare them inside their pom.xml file. However, the version and scope can be inherited from the parent. For example, if one of the child modules wants to use Spring Core dependency, then it can just add this dependency without the version tag because version and scope would be inherited automatically from the parent pom. So this way we can avoid version conflicts by defining consistent versions 
for shared dependencies. Simply put, if you want to manage versions centrally while allowing the child modules to decide whether to include the dependency or not, you'd want to list those dependencies inside the dependency management tag. And of course, if there is a dependency which is only required by a specific child module, you can declare them inside the child's pom.xml file rather than in the parent pom. And that way we can ensure that the dependency is only included where it is needed. Same is the case with the plugins. All the plugins that you include in plugin management were not automatically inherited by the child modules. However, if you list them as part of the plugin stack though, like so, then those plugins would be inherited automatically. But what is the real benefit of going with this approach? Well, first of all, dependency and version management is now centralized in parent POM. Also, our code base is better organized, which will improve the scalability and maintainability. And we can also have a common build process. If we build the parent POM, it would also build all its child modules. Let me do just that. And the build is successful and all the modules are built. One thing I should also mention is that if you're planning to convert an existing project into multi-module project, then of course you have to add all these tags manually. But typically the parent project does not have the source files. Its primary purpose is to act as a container for the child modules, managing the shared configurations, dependencies and build process. Alright, I hope it makes sense.